Welcome back to Questing Beast. I'm Ben. Today we're taking a look at two different books. Uh, these are both DM notebooks or journals designed for a game master running a game who needs to keep track of all the information in their campaign. Uh, over here we have the World Builders Notebook created by Jacob Hurst from the Swordfish Islands. And over here, Field Notes uh, is published by Field Notes and it is a 5e game master journal. Uh, so we're going to take a look through both of these, figure out who they're best suited for, uh, do any of them have features that others don't, and where they stand in comparison to one another. Before we start, though, a quick shout out to today's sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Penny Dragon Games and their new book on Kickstarter, Azendor's Vault of Tragic Treasure. Azendor's Vault is laden with magic items of the tragic variety. Most are tragic in origin alone, but others are tragic by nature and to be used at one's own risk. This vault is a 300-page sourcebook packed with lore, adventure, and over 300 magic items with a twist, including cursed items, artifacts, and treasure that will prompt epic stories at your table. Go down to the description below in this video and click on that link to check it out on Kickstarter for yourself. Thanks again to Penny Dragon Games for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to the show. All right, let's start out by looking in field notes to see what we get. This comes in a pack of two. They're both purple colored. And I think they are both identical. So we only really need to look through one of them. Field Notes is a pretty famous booklet uh, brand. They sell lots of little journals and things like that. So it makes sense that they would want to get into the uh, fifth edition D&D field. Right off the bat on the inside, we see that there are some notes that you can use to keep track of uh, your campaign in general, who you are, and there's some little random tables down here that you can use. They're mostly just for flavor, I would say. You may not use them exactly in your game, but they're fun to have. We start off with a campaign name, uh, synopsis and description, uh, the players and their email contacts right there. And then we start getting into inspirations and house rules. Uh, I really like how the um, pages here are not done with lines, but are done with a dot grid. Uh, that's great because you can use it as a graph to draw dungeons. And of course you can use it for lines. There's more options there. I don't know if I'm really crazy about the fact that every page is labeled with one particular thing. Of course you can ignore that. Um, but I would really like the ability to label your own pages and not have to ignore stuff that's already there because you know, every game master is going to be doing this a little bit differently. We have a section on world overview, some core assumptions, genre. So this is a big picture stuff. The multiverse, if you're going to develop a whole multiverse, although I don't know if two pages is really enough to do that. I suppose you could uh, get a brief sketch of it. The major pantheon, if you're going to develop all of the gods with their deity, symbol, and domain. Uh, right off the bat, what I'm noticing, the, the tone of this book, is it is very much geared for a fifth edition. Uh, there is a assumption of a multiverse, for example. It feels like it's really set in a D&D &D world, and it's intended for that. And it has this uh, fairly strong structure to it. Uh, so that's less freeform, and it's more designed for the kinds of campaigns that it assumes a 5e DM would be running. We have a section on a calendar, or just labeled calendar. Uh, some hex maps. That's really nice. Uh, if you want to do an old school hex map, this is all there for you. The hexes are a little bit on the small side, um, but if you just wanted to maybe shade them in for, with different colors to represent different terrain types, I think that would work pretty well. You may have a hard time making notes, though, in each of them to figure out what each hex represents, if there's like a city or something like that there. We have two pages of hexes, and then we start getting into a section on, I suppose, the geography. So a major kingdom along with stuff like, you know, the kingdom, the citizenry, what the age is like, the history, the notes for it, and so on. Settlements and locations. Enough for, I don't know, there's about four of those per page. Some key NPCs. So important ones have a more of a half page here. I think later on they get uh, smaller sections for more minor NPCs. And this is, again, very 5E related. We have ideals, flaws, bonds, secrets. A lot of this stuff is on 5E uh, character sheets. So it, you can transpose it here. You have your basic stats, AC, hit points, ally, enemy, or other. No room for stats, really. But uh, generally with NPCs, that's not a huge deal. Some secondary NPCs, like I mentioned. One thing that's nice here is that um, it is it does lie very flat because it is staple bound. That's something that I like a lot in journals like this. It's really going to be easy to hold in one hand and it's not going to want to close itself. So I appreciate that about it. Moving on from our NPCs, we have a section for player characters. Each person gets one whole page. 
Um, yeah, so you have passive perception, passive insight, some of the basic stats you want to keep track of. I suppose if you're a DM, you don't really need to keep track of their uh, actual stats. It's not really going to be important. They'll do that for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight pages for player characters. Uh, so uh, again, that's pretty 5E. Uh, the assumption that there's going to be a rather limited number of PCs. A typical party is like four. Maybe if they get a replacement character, they'll each get uh, two characters. And that would fill out this book. Um, as opposed to old school uh, games where the assumption is you're probably going to go through more characters than that. This assumed characters are going to be more resilient just from the way that it's structured. Major factions, that's nice. If you're going to run some sort of large world, you're going to need factions. A section for monsters and magic items and artifacts. Downtime activities underway. That's very nice. I really like that. A lot of games ignore downtimes. Um, but if you can have activities, keep track of the progress, maybe draw a progress bar in there. That's what I'd be tempted to do. And the cost of it. Just by having this out, I think it would encourage you to uh, talk to your players about long time uh, downtime activities. Some uh, situations and milestone XP. It does assume milestone XP, which is interesting. I guess that is the more popular option these days for 5e. Uh, some adventures. Each of them has a very quick write-up uh, with a synopsis and the XP you're going to get for it. Not really enough information to flesh it out. I suppose this could be full of ideas that you're going to flesh out into adventures later. Um, but not really enough room to make something that's like a whole session, I would say. Whole section on adventures here. And at the very back, we have a section for random tables. Really not much room for random tables, to be honest. Um, I really see how this book is trying to guide you, especially if you're a new dungeon master, into, into saying, oh, here's the different things you need to think about. So there's a section for each of them. And you can fill in these blanks to make sure you've got all the important stuff in there. Um, but for a more experienced DM, it might be a little constricting to have things this structured uh, if you didn't need those elements. All right. And on the very back, we have uh, some more tavern name generators, some quick stuff about how to run combat, an alignment table, and so on. Really just flavor. I don't know how much you're really going to use this during the game, but it's there. All right, let's take a look at our other option. This is the World Builders Notebook put out by Swordfish Islands. Uh, in the interest of full disclosure, I should point out that the author of this book, Jacob Hurst, is the publisher of my adventure, The Waking of Willoughby Hall. So you can keep that in mind. It comes in black with uh, gold foil or red with black. Uh, I think the contents are the same either way. I'll just set this one over here so we can take a look at what's inside. There might be other colors as well. I'm not totally sure. These are just the ones I got. And we have some great color art on the inside. I think this is a Frank Frazetta piece. I believe the other book has another piece of art. There's a few different options you can get. All right, right off the bat, we start off with uh, contents. And I really like how it's just a big table of contents. It's all blank. And there's these colored squares here. When I was flipping through this earlier, what I noticed was that as you go through this book, on the sides, there's these boxes here. So what you can do is as you are creating this table of contents, you can perhaps color code or maybe use a letter for each of these boxes and then add it in on the side when uh, the contents matches that. So if you just have a section that's like monsters and you have like a color in red, you could just flip through the edge here, look for red dots and find a monster. That's really clever. And it really allows for a lot of customization. Right off, we get into uh, our sheets here, regional maps and a dot grid. So the dot grid is the same as the one that we saw in field notes. Uh, the big difference here is that this is done in cyan blue which means that once you scan this and upload it, it's gonna be very easy to remove the dots and you'll get a much cleaner image that you can scan and use for other purposes. This has a hex map, just like we saw in field notes. Uh, the difference is that the hexes are much larger, which I prefer. They're not huge, but they're big enough that you can add more detail as to what is inside each hex and perhaps even make small notes. I really appreciate that. Uh, one thing that's perhaps a downside, this is a hardback book and it feels really nice. It feels very hefty and, and cool in your hand. A downside is that it's going to be harder to keep open. Uh, the staple bound uh, field notes books are very, lie very flat. They're very easy to hold. Whereas this, um, it kind of wants to bounce back. If you put it on the table, it really wants to stay shut just because the way that it's bound. And we have a lot of pages of this. So this is a book that really does assume that you are building a world. It's for someone who is making a large scale campaign and needs room for that to breathe. Plenty of hexes, plenty of uh, dot graphs. And we have uh, some hex flowers here, which I guess you could zoom in on for particular locations. What you could even do 
is if you had a certain location, right, these uh, hexagons are roughly the same size as these hexagons, I guess if you just turned it sideways. So maybe even these could be zoomed in versions of this, or maybe they're just details that you want to flesh out a little bit more. Plenty of space for those. All the way through there. And then we get to this section where we have, again, dot graph on this side where you can either uh, draw things using graph paper or write notes. But over here, we have an isometric grid, which is really interesting. So what this allows you to do is to draw things in 3D very quickly and easily, which I appreciate. Uh, the only way I think this could be improved is if we had an isometric dot grid. So this is all done with lines, which makes it, I think, a little bit easier to figure out how you would draw an isometric uh, illustration. But it does leave a lot of blue on the page, which I guess is going to be easy to um, erase if you upload it. But when you're actually drawing it, there's just a lot of clutter there. If instead there was a dot where each of those intersections were, I think it would have been a little bit better. That's just a personal preference of mine. Uh, another interesting feature here that I've noticed is that uh, on each of these pages, there is a little dot. It's maybe it's a little bit hard to see just because of the way this is shot, but there's a little dot exactly in the middle of each of these pages, making it very easy to divide them in half. That's a tiny little detail. That's a cool little touch. These do have ribbon notebooks, which is very, uh, ribbon bookmarks, sorry, which is very nice. Skip ahead a bit more to our next section. And we just have a section that's just graph paper or just a dot grid. This book is very different from the field notes version in that it is much less concerned with telling you or guiding you as to what the pages are for. Uh, this book is much more like a toolkit that is open and has some basic features that you're probably going to need, but isn't concerned with telling you exactly what you should do with it. Uh, there is a black outline every once in a while. Um, but I'm not totally sure what that's for on the outside of the page. We do have labels at the bottom of each page, sublocations and life, uh, isometric locations, regional maps, and so on. Um, but they're a bit less uh, a bit less in your face than what we see with the field notes. So I actually didn't notice them for a little while. So they're really not that big of a deal. All right, moving ahead, we have a lot of graph paper here. And that's the main rest of the book. We do have some maps at the very back here. I believe these are all by uh, Dyson Logos, which are all free for anyone to use. So this is kind of a reference section here. You're all, always going to need a town map so there's or a uh, tavern map. So there's just one ready to go for you. You can either use it as is or, I suppose, use it as a model to draw your own. We have a little town that you can use. A couple of towns. It looks like a castle there. A miniature dungeon. Well, a couple of dungeons. We've got an isometric one. This is great because, again, it's an example of how you would draw an isometric location in case you're confused about how to use those pages. And we have a section on biomes. So there, this is a little bit of reference material here. So some basic information that especially a new world builder might find very useful so that, uh, as Jacob says, you don't go down a Wikipedia rabbit hole. Some basic information about landforms, the different names of landforms some sword and sorcery information, nouns, adjectives, colors, just so that you can make up characters really quickly and easily. And we have a section on probability. If you're creating random tables, you need to know how 2d6 and 3d6 work, what a bell curve looks like, how percentages work out. It's just some basic stuff that comes in uh, very frequent use if you're designing worlds. And then we have a little uh, table of contents, or sorry, a little uh, credits at the very back of the book. So those are our two books. Um, the World Builder's Notebook from Swordfish Islands and Field Notes. The main takeaways are um, maybe if you're brand new to DMing, this could be a little bit easier because it gives you more ideas of what to write. Uh, but this one is far more customizable and much more open. Uh, this would be my preference, I think, out of the two of these, just because if you're building a whole world, you need to have a lot of freedom to design your own pages, design, uh, decide what comes after what, the way that you're going to organize stuff. And this um, allows you to do that much more easily, I think, than the field guides or the field notes version. However, I will put links to both of these in the description below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.